during WWDC, Apple announced Apple Intelligence, which is not coming until the end of 2024 or even next year. But there's other ways we can include AI in our apps. Today, I'm going to show you Olama, which is a new open source platform that helps you running local LLMs on your Macs. We're going to install Olama and then test it in a terminal. I'm going to also show you some Swift UI apps where you see how they implemented this or how this is used. These are similar to JTTP desktop apps, which is just one way of using this, but there's a lot more to explore where you can enhance your apps with AI inside. It is important to know how good are these LLMs running locally. I have a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip and 18 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> this is going to be interesting to see what I can run. This is limiting what I can run. If you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, this is probably not at all feasible, what I'm going to do here. We'll look at the response times and how long it takes for different models. I will start by installing Olama. You have to go to olama.com and then press on download. I am installing here for macOS. The files we're going to download are quite large. Each of these models or the smaller models are already four gigabyte. So you also have to make sure you have some space on your disk, which is not always the case when you work with Xcode. Then you launch the Olama app. You want to give it access, open. I am moving this to applications. Then it's launching the app. And this is just a setup asking me to install the command line tool, which is Olama. This is definitely what I want because we were going to work with the command line. Just going to leave this up here and we're opening the terminal. So if I copy this command, it will run the command line tool, which is called Olama. And it runs the Llama free model with 7 billion parameters. Because this is the first time I launched this, it's now downloading it. And you see here it's downloading 4.7 gigabytes. The reason why I really like this whole system is that instead of each application that the user installs on their app, which ships with its own model, then each of these apps would have to also ship five gigabytes. And then you're just having a lot of similar models on your computer. This is not really feasible. With this strategy, the user installs for this one platform, Olama, multiple of these models or just one of them. And then your applications, if you have like each of the applications on your computer can access the same models on the disk. So we don't, we can share the same resources. The one disadvantage, as you see, is that the people have to actually install Olama, but you probably, when you're using your own apps, you need to add a system prompt with an installation guide. You just need to download this app and then install the command line tool. In our own application here, Xcode projects, you can also download these models later on. So we can do this separately. Whilst this is downloading, I also can show you an overview of the models. So this is on the Olama GitHub where they have more information. Here they give an overview of the models. This is also coming, these are open source models. The best ones that just recently was added is Llama 3 with 8 billion parameters. I checked what kind of computer you can, what, what system configurations you need to have to be able to run them. So this is okay for a 16 gigabyte RAM. The 70 billion one, which is much better, you need at least 64 gigabytes of RAM. And if you're not having enough, it's getting really slow on your computer. There's a lot of these that are specified, that are already trained fine-tuned for certain use cases. For example, we have a code llama. The uncensored one is just where sometimes JTTP is like, oh, I can't answer this, this is not allowed, this is not legal. And they added also an uncensored one where you can do whatever you want. As you see here, there's also some more information, as I said, what you have to have for computers. But we need to test each of them and see which ones perform for which use cases. Okay, now downloaded it and configured this model, we see the success message. And now I can send a message and interact with this or talk to this model, to this to Llama 3. What is Olama? This is another question. Okay, it does not know because this is not trained in this model. 
Llama Free is an open source model from Facebook. Okay, try something. What is Swift UI? Swift UI is a relatively new user interface framework developed by Apple. As you see, it's pretty fast. If you want to know exactly how fast this is, we can change the input. And I need to actually change how I run this. So I need to first leave. So I press Control D. And then we run again. Ulama run Llama free with slash slash verbose. And now I can ask the same question again. So what is Swift UI? As you see, my computer is fast enough to handle this. It's pretty quickly responding. Then because I use the extra argument of verbose, we see some stats of the total duration. This took in total 13 seconds. The evaluation rate is 28 tokens per second. So this is how fast it responded, depending on, this is a good indicator of knowing is your computer handling this or not. You can also use activity monitor. So one thing it tells me is that the Olama server is already taking one gigabyte of memory. What actually happens is in the background, they're creating a local server. You can also create from your projects in Swift UI, in Swift API request to your local server and then communicate with this. So we see some example apps where they use this strategy, but it did not hit any limits for me. And you saw this is also, it was responding pretty quickly. I'm not going to run any of the larger models. You can also go to the llama.com website to check all the models. I'm going to use now a different one just because this is a 17, 16 billion model. So again, control D to exit. And then I run Olama run deep sea coder and then slash slash verbose. It will download this model again, which is now nine gigabytes. <laughs> okay. It finished now downloading this and we can test this again. What is Swift UI? In this case, it's actually giving me a lot longer answer. You can also check your activity monitor. And in my case, I have here a um, area. In my case, you see here, I have, I reached the memory in the yellow area. So this was quite heavy, but it still handled it fine. If I do the same thing and I remove, I close down one of my apps, which is Xcode, I'm getting at the limit where it's fine. But I'm at the edge. This was, I was really at the edge of my 16 gigabyte RAM physical memory. You can test these models with different scenarios. One thing that it doesn't really do with Swift UI very well is that it doesn't know the new features. So if you ask, explain Swift UI navigation stack, this one actually knows about it. You see it has the navigation stack with the link and the value and the navigation destination. This API is like two years old, which is pretty nice that it has it. We can also test the same thing. Okay. Control D for quitting. And then I need to go to Llama free. So we're running this one and testing explains Swift UI navigation stack. It's actually slower, although it's a smaller model. And it doesn't know about it because you see here it's still using navigation view. So in this case, it really makes sense if you want to, for your personal development, to use the specified uh, models. As you see, Olama is super helpful if you want to run something locally, but just using the terminal is not really usable sometimes. Olama has been around for a year now, and there has been a few projects on GitHub where they actually wrote a GUI, a user interface with SwiftUI. So let's have a look. I'm going to close this one. And the first one is the Olama Mac app project. I will leave the links to the GitHub uh, in the description box. The whole system works by um, writing network requests to the local server. Every time you run Olama, it will locally create a server and this is how they interact with this. If I now run this, you need to uh, add your team development accounts. You get the user interface by creating a new chat. And now you can get name this new chat coding test, select a model. Now I have the two models that I already downloaded. So I used again the deep, the coder one. 
So what is navigation stack in Swift UI? And as you see now, it actually communicates with Olama and gets the response back. This is a more basic example where you can interact with this. If you have a look at the code, this is always using this Olama kit package or importing Olama kit, which is then doing the communication to the local server. So this is the base URL. This is, as you see here, HTTP localhost. I checked all the other projects on GitHub and all of them use this strategy of using the local server. Now going back to the terminal, I have here this specialized coding model, but I want to configure this a little bit more because now every time I communicate with this, I, I need to tell it that I use Swift UI, otherwise it would use another framework. So I want to, similar to the custom JTTP where you can say the system prompt, you are an iOS developer and you respond in Swift UI questions. And I also want to add something like the changing the temperature and some of the access. So we can create a custom model. If I go back to the documentation, it tells me here customizing a model. So we need to create a file, add the information like here, set the parameter to one or the temperature to one. And here you can include a system prompt. In this case, they made a Super Mario Bro. So first I need to create a new file for this model. So this is a nano Swift UI expert here. It's now opening this file and we can paste whatever we think is correct. So I'm going to copy the model file text. Okay, so from Llama 3, which means it's going to use Llama 3 as the model. Then we can say how we want to set the parameter. So let's say I want to have this not so creative. I want to have just a default one. So 0. Point. And now I can customize my system prompt. So you are a Swift UI expert. And you give short and precise answers. I don't really like it to answer too long. You write high quality code with best following best practices. You basically could give years more information of how you want to have answers, like how do you want to have the formatting of the code or whatever you want. So let's just keep it like this and press control X for exit. Then I need to say if I want to save this and I press Y for yes. Okay. I want to keep this file name. Yes. Okay. Now we created this file, which is the model file that we're going to use. Next is I actually want to create this custom model. So this is the second one here. This is Olama create Mario. And this is the Mario in this case is the name of the model. Okay. Maybe I'm just going to type this myself. Olama create Swift UI expert Llama free dash F. And now I need to tell it which model file to use. So it's just the name of the file that we just created, which is Swift UI expert. So this is the model file name and this is the models, the custom GPT, uh, the custom model file. Okay. We are successful now. It transfers the data and configured everything and it put it already in the folder system. And now I can go back and run my uh, little Olama Mac app here with a new chat. And if I open this, you see now I have my custom model with the Swift UI export Llama 3. And write, for example, now I can say write a model for a note taking app. The main test is just to see that we're getting here Swift code back and you see, I get here Swift code back, so I don't need to think of stuff and it just does all the configuration. 
this is uh, really interesting because then you can maybe also include this in your macOS apps where they can create custom GPTs uh, locally. On the GitHub, you can find a list of projects that are done from the community. For example, this MindMag app, which has a lot more features. It has in-app purchases. I don't ask you to buy this. There's also free stuff. It's just interesting to see what they included. For example, in this cases, you can also communicate with your local files. Maybe you want to communicate with your PDFs. In case you want to know the... This reminds me of one more thing, because the model context is only 8,000 tokens for this one, but there is a custom one, which is Llama Free Gradient. This goes from 8,000 tokens to 1 million tokens. Uh, the important thing is that <laughs> you need to have a very good Mac. So for example, if you want to use a context window of 250,000 tokens, so this would be hundreds of pages of an PDF, quite a lot of data, maybe something that is necessary if you run a um, larger Xcode project and you want to read all these files, then you need to have 64 gigabytes. If you want to have even higher, then you need to have more than 100 gigabytes. You see, you really need to make sure what you're using. Depending on the use cases, you also need to figure out what to use. There's always a little bit of trade-off. What do I actually want to do? But the cool thing is that we can easily implement something locally. And all these models that I have now on my Mac take up a bit of, at least each of these models is like four gigabytes, take a lot of space. It makes it very easy for the user because I only need to download this now once. I have this on my disk and then a lot of apps can use this and take advantage of this. I think it's a very smart strategy. And I kind of was hoping that Apple would also think of a similar thing, but they didn't. What Apple Intelligence does is just using Siri, enhancing Siri, and they're also using a lot of stuff for their own apps, but for me, as a developer, I'm interested in using LLMs in the apps to see how I in improve the user experience. Maybe how I do some automatic tasks. For example, if you have an email client for the Mac, you can write emails or summarize emails. Let me know what you would actually use for this or what you are interested in with this AI models. Would you actually use something like what I showed you here for your own daily tasks. Like this video if you want to see more of this kind of content. Until next time, happy coding!